This is Lee Kamen on the Jazz Corner party line and a call to a, a most unique gentleman in the world of jazz. He divides his time between two instruments, the guitar and the harmonica. His background is European, and uh, what his connection with jazz is, we'll find out. Hello to Jean Toots Tillman. Hello, Lee. It's good to talk to you after all that long time. I should say so. Not since your, uh, your cycles with George Shearing, and then uh, it goes back even farther than that when you yes. were with Belgian York, Airlines. Yes. Uh, tell me, one thing that I never did get around to asking you, Jean, uh, how uh, did you discover the harmonica and its relationship to jazz? Well, I discovered the harmonica by listening to some of the records, you know, namely by Larry Adler and people like that, and then some of the harmonica groups that were popular, with popular music. So I bought a harmonica just for fun. And uh, I guess I became interested in jazz and whatever instrument I would play, and I would wind up playing jazz on it, I guess, and I feel very fortunate that Let's see. Jazz chose me. Jazz chose you. Yeah, I seem to to feel such great pleasure in playing jazz. That's, that's what, what can I say? <laughs> well, that uh, that is uh, an answer to my question, all right. Jean Toots Tillman on the Jazz Corner Party Line. Another Party Line jazz call. And let's talk with Jean Toots Tillman, a virtuoso of harmonica and guitar, recording for Riverside and other labels and uh, formerly a member of the George Shearing Quintet. John, I know you're there, and I know your background is Europe. I might ask you, what uh, were the, some of the first jazz recordings, or what, what jazz can you recall hearing that influenced you? Well, my, my education, let's say my years of study of jazz are the same as most European musicians. We were listening to American records that we could uh, smuggle into our uh, countries that was during the war mostly. I became interested in jazz in 1940 and uh, we were listening to records first of all by Django Reinhardt, my first idol on guitar and then the records by Benny Goodman, the Benny Goodman Quartet and then later on Count Basie and the immortal Lester Young and then uh, finally in 1946 People like Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie came along and changed the, the scope altogether. So I guess that was about my evolution, I guess, my years of uh, study, of jazz study. Well, that sounds like uh, rich lore for anyone who likes jazz, especially when you mention names like Gil Reinhardt, Benny Goodman, Count Basie, and the president, Lester Young. Another call on the Jazz Corner party line, and this is Leigh Kamen with Django Reinhardt in mind, and a call to Jean Toots Tillman, who comes from Belgium, and I think your home city is Antwerp, is that No, right? my home city is Brussels, Lee. That is, that's right, Brussels, uh, that's Belgium. It's very close, it's only 40 miles. Commuting distance, <laughs> actually. That's right. Well, you know, I, I talked to a countryman of yours, Bobby Jaspar. Oh, yes. He's a and good Bobby learned a great deal from Django Reinhardt, and I was wondering how Django Reinhardt influenced you, since you are a guitarist with a European background, and Django, what was he, the greatest figure in, uh, in yes, America, uh, European Django, and worldwide jazz? Well, I still think uh, you cannot listen to Django with uh, the same rhythmic conception that you would listen to any modern jazz. You have to listen for real, uh, lyrical interpretation to Django and for uh, you know, what you would call absolute musicianship. Django is the greatest exponent on the gu of the guitar <coughs> excuse me this side let's say of segovia yes and there's no absolute no no doubt about that django was a fantastic let's say improviser a man whose ideas and and lyrics uh, that is the flow of melodies and themes uh, was sort of like a reservoir yes it was fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I had a chance to play at a few sessions with him. What did you observe? I mean, listen, uh, listen to him play at a few sessions. And I was just strumming some vague background with great delight. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I'm sure you had a chance to observe uh, as you modestly stood in the background. And uh, first of all, 
I, I, I might ask you what stood out about Django as you recall those sessions. Well, of course, his technique, especially for a guitar player, his picking technique is absolutely fabulous. He had the, the fastest, the most precise right hand that anyone could dream of having. And but Bobby uh, Jack beyond... Barr, uh, once remarked, uh, uh, he said that um, Django made him play so fast that he could never catch his breath. And Bobby, being a reed man and a flautist, had a, uh, a dickens of a time breaking in with him. Sure. Django was... But that's not the main thing I, I learned to, to appreciate about Django. It's, it's the the musicianship, the notes, and the meaning of each note he was playing. Django was a real genius. What do you think influenced Django? His, uh, Nobody. his background? Uh, his, no, his, well, I mean, his, uh, as a Django gypsy was a gypsy, or? you know. Django uh -huh. was a gypsy, so there is some, some uh, gypsy influences to be found in his playing. And, and also, great also a great love for Duke Ellington's music. And a love for classics. Yes, also, of course, the French classics. And if you were to sum up uh, in so many words uh, a thought about Django, what would you say? I'd say that uh, Django is one of the, the few true original giants of jazz. Thank you very much, John Toots Tillman. A call on the Jazz Corner Party Live. Jazz has a worldwide kind of language, as any music has. And... Uh, for an idea of how a European takes to jazz and how it affects him, we're going to ask Jean Toots Tillman a question. And the question is, Jean, what do you think a European musician can learn by coming to play and circulate in, in American jazz while living in the States? Well, Lee, that's a very, very important question, and I'm very glad to give you my, let's say, my personal experience on the subject. I was born in Belgium, as you know, and raised and grew up with uh, French music, French or continental, shall we say, continental music. And of course then I developed a great liking for jazz. Then finally I came to the States. And I can, looking back at the years now, and at the time I just arrived into to the States, to this country, I can say that now I have learned the meaning of the notes. The meaning of the notes. And yes, maybe from a record. You see, in Belgium I could listen to the records and learn which we would, what you might compare, what can be learned out of a book. You would be studying science or any form of art, for instance, from a book or from the books that are available on the subject. But then the records that I mentioned earlier, like records by Dizzy Gillespie and Count Basie, Benny Goodman, Charlie Park, all these records are the books that are available to the European jazz students in Europe. But when you come to the States where jazz is made, and where jazz is not only made, jazz is lived by these people, then you have a chance to really learn the meaning of the notes, and especially the meaning of the blues, and the people who play the blues right. <laughs> And John, uh, I've I, been fortunate to be associated. Excuse me, I feel so serious about this subject, Lee. I kept interrupting you. Well, I've been fortunate to travel with a group like George Shearing all over the country for a few years, and I feel that has finished, has completed my uh, jazz education. And today, you're striking out on your own, which we'll ask you about a little bit later. Okay. But uh, for the moment, we'll call an intermission on this idea of what a European jazz musician can learn here in the States. I want to ask you some more questions about it, and uh, I'll get back to that in just a moment. More conversation on the influences of American jazz on European musicians. No better man to express that than Jean Toots Tillman, who recently has been touring with George Shearing, and today is out uh, as his own... Uh, uh, leader and solo star. John Tillman, I, I was talking to you about European jazz not so long ago and uh, the influence of American jazz on the European musician. That's what I really should say. And you mentioned something about learning the meaning of the blues. What did you mean by that? Well, 
all depends, of course, how much <clears throat> how much you like the blues. But in my case, I simply love the blues. I don't know what I would play in jazz, what I would be as a musician if I could not play the blues and, let's say, put the blues into my jazz interpretation of other standards, for instance. But uh, I should say that the main thing a European musician can learn, can acquire from coming to this country and being exposed to all the facets of the the jazz scene is exactly the meaning of the blues. With Wood George here, I was exposed to all kinds of situations, traveling, for instance, with the whole Cam Basie group, traveling, uh, really living with with the colored musicians who are really the creators of the blues, the, 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 the best interpreters of the blues. And by talking to them and traveling with them, there's no doubt that I acquired, let's say, a deeper feeling for the blues and, and the, the meaning, let's say, behind the notes. <coughs> Excuse me, behind the notes. Well, that certainly uh, is... Uh a most illuminating observation. And uh, from your standpoint, as a European musician who has a great love for jazz, the viewpoint of learning the meaning of the blues is one of the great lessons for any musician who doesn't know it by background. Yes, the, the musicians call it soul these days, but really that's what it is. You have to get with the soul, as they say. <laughs> Well, that's good enough for me, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners have learned a lot, too. John Toots Tillman, thank you ever so much. You're very welcome, Lee. It's a pleasure. <laughs>